Dobar dan, dobar dan svima, poštovani prijatelji, pratioci na društvenim mražama, gledaoci emisije Sat, čitaoci Revije i naravno ljubitelji automobila čuvene legendarne marke BMW. Da se družite sa mnom, s jednim specijalnim gostom, ali ćete moći da ekskluzivno iz prve ruke uživo upoznate novi BMW M3 i M4. Oni su upravo stigli na naše tržište, ali nijedna novinarska ekipa do sada nije se družila s ovim automobilima, pogotovo ne uživo ovako kao mi i mi ćemo danas imati priliku da vam sve to pokažemo, a vi ćete imati priliku da pitate, da tražite od nas, da nešto probamo, da nešto testiramo, da biste uticali na kraju krajeva i na naš utisak o ovom automobilu koji zajedno testiramo s vama. Nažalost, ne možemo se družimo da budemo zajedno ovde, ali evo, moderna tehnologija omogućava da vi utičete na rezultate našeg testa. Sad, naravno, vidite da sam ja tu ovde u centru Nava, gde ste već navikli da budem, automobili su tu, to ste već videli, ali imamo jednog specijalnog gosta, zbog koga ćemo naš razgovor dalje morati nastaviti na engleskom, jer je došao specijalno ovim povodom da se druži danas sa nama. Sa nama je danas gospodin Guy Katz, master trener BMW-a. Welcome, my friend, welcome. Ah, you learned some Serbian. Of course, I had to, I had to. Thank you, thank you for inviting me, this is very exciting. First time driving. It is the first time also for you? It is. I know the cars in theory, I saw them, but I didn't drive them yet. So, so people say you're a master trainer. This is how I announce you now. Uh, what does it mean, master trainer of BMW? Well, you know, it's like you in Serbia, I do for the world, something like that. Um, <laughs> I teach people how to sell the cars and the motorcycles for BMW. I teach people, well, the great things we have in our products. And I hope I can teach some of our Serbian friends today some of the amazing features. And this is our goal today. Uh, let's not waste any more of time. We have really nice cars. I suppose we can start out of BMW M3 because people in Serbia are really fond of this car. It's a, it's a legend in every uh, previous... So let's introduce it, come on. So what can you tell me in the beginning? You know, people always talk about the grill, the grill, the grill. What can you tell me about the grill? Come on, let's explain something. <laughs> well, it is what makes a BMW MD a BMW ever since the Dixie. So this grill is actually over a hundred years old now. And I think, Mladen, you tell me, it's not so bad, right? You know, in the beginning, uh, there was a vertical grill in the old times. Then there was a horizontal. This is both vertical and horizontal at the same time. Yeah, they tried to put all the history, so 100 years history, into it. And I think uh, the hate the grill gets is a bit of, uh, unfair because when you see it in real life, especially with the contrasting colors here with the black line, it looks absolutely amazing. No? I can uh, really confirm this. We can show it also, the grill on the M4. You know, it looks quite amazing with, with this contrasting color. In person, I've seen the car only a few days ago, and I was thrilled. In person, it's completely different. The photos cannot really describe the shape of it, the, the, you know, the three dimensions of, of the grill. Exactly, and BMW uses two colors for contracts. It's usually black for sporty cars, like in the M version, and usually for premium lines, like 5 Series, 7 Series, you see more silver slash gold uh, contrast. For these beautiful colors, black is definitely the best color you can choose. The car really breeds. But let's mention something about uh, uh, the, the, the lines generally. Uh, these very strong lines here on the bonnet. Uh, there are also strong lines on the side. Everything is really like packed strength, you know, uh, waiting to go on the track. Well, actually, I wanted to test your knowledge. Does this remind you of any old car, this up here? I don't like old cars, only, only new ones. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, it's really reminiscent of the old CS, basically our first sport cars, and you can really see it. And yes, originally it was to make some more space for the engine. I'm not sure that's the main reason now, but let's say it just looks cool. Yeah, we'll show the engine in a few moments. Um, let me ask you about the wheels. Uh, here we have 19 inch in front and 20 inch in the back. It's, it's a mixed wheels. Um, are there any other sizes? Uh, th this is one design, there are other designs. Well, the, the main message, first of all, yes, there's many designs. You can go, go all crazy with these cars up to 20 inch. And of course, uh, with other manufacturers, whatever you want, the major story here is carbon. And I'm thinking we're going to say this word many, many times. We have not just the carbon wheels here, but the carbon brakes as well. And I think you should know the major thing you want to do is save weight. So saving weight is one thing, but saving rotating weight, especially 200, 300 kilometers per hour, is a big, big deal for handling, as you will show you, us later. You mentioned uh, carbon brakes. The, uh, of course, these this, uh, gold calipers uh, show us that this is the carbon brake in, in the back. How many kilos you save, even if you fit such a big brace, if they're uh, out of carbon? If I remember the number correctly, it's 3.7, so it's quite uh, a big deal for, for, so for, uh, for, car. for the whole car. Yeah, well, it's almost 15-ish kilos. It's, yeah. it's a big deal. It's a really big deal. And again, 
it's rotating. That's the major story. And it has another really cool advantage for Europe. Many people don't know this. You know when your brakes rust? Yeah. They don't rust. Oh. It's actually a big advantage for winter. There you have it. Yeah, we'll see in winter. We miss snow here. I would like to take this car out of snow. But uh, talking about the car, uh, when we see the, the, the line of it, we see the, the profile. Uh, I mentioned the strong details. This is the one I really love. You know, out on M4, we, we, maybe we can show this. On M4, it's, the lines are so elegant, so so long. And this is really strong. And I, I really love it. Well, I mean, you, you have a slightly reminder of diffuser over there. We can speak later about something we call the carbon package. Uh, and basically, it makes the car thicker. Anybody can see, even from the side, it's the M3 and not just a 340 or something like that. Uh, we talk about, uh, you, you said, uh, carbon package. If you order a carbon package, you get also the carbon intakes. There are other carbon parts, but there is a one carbon part which we can still see here. Oh, the okay. biggest one we can show. The biggest one, and of course, again, the story is uh, the weight here, but much more than weight, we're talking about the roof, of course, um, is the stiffness. So this is not just design. This is a real carbon. This is real carbon, and you know what carbon is, really. Carbon is diamond. Diamond is the most famous shape of carbon. There is no stronger material on Earth, and we have a diamond roof if you want. <laughs> and okay, uh, let's move to the back. Um, the lines of M3 and M4 are different. When you look the car from the back, the lights are different, everything is different. But what I really like, what I love when I saw the car for the first time, is this small detail here and a huge diffuser. Is this a real one, or is it just there as a plastic detail? No, these cars are tested in the BMW wind tunnel up to 300 kilometers per hour. Everything here makes sense. For example, the exact shape is measured in the wind tunnel, a bit more to the right, a bit more to the left, and of course the bottom diffuser. In this case, it's almost uh, 40, it depends how you measure. So both wheelbase grew and the, the total length grew. Um, I think interesting would be to check out the M4 compared to its... Uh, we'll come to that one, we'll yeah. come to that one. Exactly. But you mentioned carbon carbon brakes, carbon roof, there will be car carbon package optionally available. But there is one thing which is a huge piece of carbon here. We can show it to the camera, of course. And let's, let's, let's brag a bit about this, come on. Okay, so I think you're speaking about the carbon seats and I think this is the coolest feature we have. Not only there are electric seats, you can adjust the back and everything electrically, also the width of the seat. Yes, these are full carbon seats, which are ready for a six-point harness. So you have the holes, yeah? You can add that racing harness to them and watch it. Uh, watch this, it's 10 kilos almost, 9.6 of, of uh, savings. Uh, yeah, in total actually, in total, would be nice. Let me explain this. Uh, come on, let, let's, let's show this. You see, the carbon is really visible. This is, this is amazing. When you have a car, even if you're not driving on the track, somebody sees this, he says, okay, you have a really serious car out there because there are no other cars uh, available like this, you know, uh, on a daily basis. Yeah, I can, I can show it. Before I sit in the back, I can show this, how, how it fits. It fits really nice, you see? And this carbon part in between your legs, it doesn't obstruct your seating. It's just your legs have really nice place to fit in and you're cocooned like in the race car. Although, although it's, it's comfortable, it's not uncomfortable as, as a race car. This is really nice. And carbon parts here on the, uh, on the steering wheel, carbon gear shift pedals. Everything is carbon here. You need to remember that it's a carbon car. Actually, this one has the carbon line or the carbon interior, so there's more than the average, yeah. Um, very nice. Okay, let's, start, uh, let's try one, one thing. You can sit in front, you can set up yourself as you like it, and I can sit in the back. How tall are you? 183. Okay, I'm also 183. Oh, welcome. So, let's see if this is a real car for daily use. Come on. Okay. I come in the back. I'm good. You're good? Yeah. Okay. Here, in the back. I have, let's say, some 10 centimeters of space from my, from my uh, legs to the seat. I have additional, I don't know, this is five centimeters to the roof. I really feel comfortable. Uh, not like in the five series, but this can be used as a daily driver. This is really, really nice. Oh, come on. Really good. Okay, get out. Now, uh, I think that we should not spend more time on design. Uh, M3 is all about technology. Why don't we show the engine? Come on. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Okay, the machine. The machine. Three, two, one, and ta-da! What is this? Come on, let, let's, let's give us a few numbers. Uh, 
where should I start? Okay, so 510 uh, horsepower for the competition model we have here. Um, you see the struts. I think that's the major thing that you can see on the top of it. Lots of reinforcement above and also under the engine, by the way, also going into the wheel wells. Uh, so th th there are two struts also going down. No, no, this is not the only, only thing that is visible. Ah, okay. Exactly. And there's many things you cannot see. First of all, talking about struts, same story in the back. So the backside has never been so stiff. And I mean, we're talking real wheel drive, so you need it to be stiff. So you have back struts as well, both vertically and going into the sides. And two of my favorite features in this engine is actually the cooling. You want to go hard on the racetrack. You want to go for a Yes, of course I won't. Well, of course you do. Of course you do. So you have a cooling system with a special, well, extra power for up to 30 minutes of extra cooling power. And the fan can go up to 11 minutes which is more than enough for your good Nürburgring track or something like that. Yeah. Hopefully it's going to be a good time on Nürburgring. Um, six cylinders, 510 horsepower. But if I don't opt for the competition model, what do I get? Oh, well, it's not that bad, actually. Uh, but it's 480 horsepower is still quite enough. And the beautiful thing about it, you have a lot of torque from the beginning because we have our famous twin scroll turbocharger. So starting very, very low on the RPM. And this one here in the our car, it's mated to eight-speed automatic gearbox, which is Steptronic, if I remember correctly, the, the, the name, yeah? And uh, is there a manual available? There is a manual available. I think now it starts with a non-competition model, later for the competition, and also for the first time ever in the 3 Series, we will have the new MX Drive 4x4. Okay, will it mean that I cannot drift anymore? No, you can disconnect it for drifting, but we talked about winters. Maybe in winter you want it anyway. Yeah, this is pretty much like in the 5 Series, M5, of course, the, the, the same thing. Same thing you just never had in the 3 Series. You talked about the transmission, of course. It's an m Steptronic, so it's specially made for this car. It's not the usual gearbox you find on the other 3 Series. And talking about an, en an engine, everybody would like to hear how does it sound. So I suggest that you sit in the driver's place, uh, we start up the car. We don't have the car now warmed up, so the engine will not be in its best shape, but let's try. Come on. Cool. Come on, let's try to see how does it sound. I'll be in the back so we can really co record the sound. I will enjoy. Okay. Don't forget to put it into sport mode because it will open up then the whole sound area. Okay, ah, uh, you're gonna make me stay there all day. <laughs> That's amazing. It's a smart car, so it knows it's standing and not warm yet, so it didn't let me go up to full rev. Engine doesn't want me to destroy it already, so it's a good <laughs> We can destroy it later on the track. Exactly, <laughs> but it needs to get warm first. Now, uh, speaking about uh, technology on this car, uh, one thing, I want to mention it right now, b before we, we go on, out on the track, but of course we can mention it later again. Rear M differential, M sport differential, how does it called? Yeah, the rear M sport differential, it's a, it's a differential. Well, every car has a differential, but you need much stronger components in this case, and you need much faster reaction for those fast braking turns, straights, and so on, and it does exactly all that. It's smarter, and it's faster, and it's stronger. So practically, when I approach the curve, it's opened. When I exit from the curve, it closes down very quickly, so I can have a better exit. Exactly, and it has some extra computer power, let's say, with another system a bit complicated called ARB, basically saying this car reacts about three times faster in the racetrack, on the racetrack, than previous models. So communication between the components is three times faster than any previous car? Uh, oh. Approximately three times, yeah. Fantastic. But, you know, uh, maybe it would be quite a nice time to answer some questions before we go out on, out on the track. I, I suppose we can have, I don't know, less time for... Five, six questions, but we can talk about the M4 in the meantime before we start the questions. Um, I said that the line is different, of course, it's so much elegant here because you have no rear doors and th these lines are much softer here. For me personally, I love this one. It is not everybody's comment, but what are the differences between M3 and M4? It is just number of doors or there are other differences? Well, I mean, this is 
the real sports car, let's say. So there's a lot of changes on the M4. At the end of the day, the M3 still has to fit a few people in the back comfortably, as we've seen. Sure, it's stiff in the carbon roof and all of that, but here they made some really great changes compared to the previous models. So it's a coupe. It is 54 millimeters lower, which is a lot. It's five centimeters. It's obvious. It looks so long, you know. That's right. But not just that. The center of gravity, which is what you need on the racetrack, is about 21, I think, uh, millimeters lower. So the whole car sits slower on the ground and you have more power at the bottom, let's say, more weight at the bottom, that's the right word. It gets me a much better feeling while I'm driving, of course. Uh, but we'll talk about driving anyway. Uh, with us, we have our colleague, Mrs. Natalia Delic. Uh, he's, she's following the questions of our audience and I will try to be interpreter. You know, we, we hear the question in Serbia and then I ask you in English and then we come back. So uh, let's ask her to come and join us and uh, we can ask a few interesting questions uh, from the array of what we got so far. Okay, Natalia kaže šta ljudi pitaju. Imamo nekoliko pitanja. Prvo je u vezi sedišta i karbona i da se pojasni malo svi su ove zapanjeni kako izgledaju. Ah, everybody is completely thrilled with, with the carbon seats. So we can explain a bit more about them. So standard M3, no competition, no nothing, no optionals, gets standard seats. Exactly. Well, no, it gets the M Sport seats, which are already very, very sporty, but they're not made out of carbon, and they don't have the place for the six-point uh, seating harness. For that, you need to order the M Carbon seats. Okay, so the carbon seats are optional. Uh, the complete structure is out of carbon. This is it. Well, the complete structure is out of carbon, and it, the beautiful th thing about this seat, it's, it's a true racing seat, but it's comfortable. So, And it's, uh, uh, you can uh, adjust it electrically. This is what I saw. And most importantly, the uh, size of your back, so the, the width of the seat can be also adjustable. We are probably the only manufacturer that offers a true racing seat that is electrically adjustable, including the back, in a standard. And you also say weight in this way. It's lighter, as you said. 10 kilos, or 9.6, which is a lot. Okay, next question. Okay, there's a question again about the X-Drive, so let's explain the X-Drive is available exactly both of them, one of them, how does it work? Um, yeah, the X-Drive is going to come a couple of months later, so actually you cannot just now get it yet. And yes, it will be available for the M4 and M3, again as an option. Some people say, I don't need it, so just take the rear-wheel drive, and some people want We it. have rear-wheel drive here on both of these cars, no X-Drive yet. The sound, the, the exhaust, is it a Krapovic exhaust or not? Uh, that's a really good question. I'm, I'm honestly not sure who the supplier is. We work with the Krapovic, especially with the motorcycles. Um, usually the M exhausts are, let's say, developed in-house. It does not mean that the Krapovic does not make them at the end, but you won't see a Krapovic signature on the standard exhaust. And I'm sure a Krapovic will offer something too, 100%. People can already see that the door is open, so which means that we are ready to go out on the track. And uh, before we go out on the track, just uh, since we mentioned somebody doing something for BMW development, let me show you one thing. Uh, I like this very much, and uh, you can confirm these tires and all of the BMW tires has, have a star marking, which I cannot see at the moment now. Yeah, it's hard to find a link. Yeah, anyway, uh, but every tire that is fitted here, uh, this is a star marking, okay, good. Every tire that is fitted on the BMW is specially constructed for BMW. That is right, and this is the tip I give all the customers. Don't save a few euros on cheap tires. They don't necessarily have to be cheap. Sometimes it's even the same model. It's not the tire that was built for this car. BMW looks at every tire together with the tire manufacturer, especially on the sports car, to ensure a perfect fit, and then it gets a star. So although it's the same model we can buy somewhere else, it is a, it, yeah. this one is specially dedicated to BMW. And you can't see the difference except for the star. So, I mean, I can't see the difference either. Should we talk about the other tire option? Yeah, like, why not? Tell me. Wow. For the first time, we offer racing tires, or so-called semi-slicks for this car, um, by Michelin. Uh, this is the current uh, version. And that's this is Pilot Sport Cup uh, 2, if I remember. Uh, the model. Sports, Pilot Sports Cup 2, that's right. And semi-slicks on a series car is something also very, very special. Semi-slick means it's basically half of it is slick, track tires, and half of it has a few grooves. Um, not very recommended to drive with them in rain on the roads, but definitely recommended for those of you going on the track. Really cool. But you can order the car out of BMW to get it uh, from a dealer already on semi-slicks. But let's not talk about the static things anymore. Let's go inside and drive. Come on. 
Ok, kao što vidite, sad smo seli automobil, staza je ispred nas. Idemo da pokažemo kako ovo svi zadovoljnje. Prvo lagano. Now, first we make really slow lap to explain uh, things about uh, the uh, multimedia system, about seating position, etc. While we do this, we will warm up the engine and then we can show some proper driving, of course, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> let's see, let's see. So, how so, does it feel? For me, sitting here is like I've been here for my whole life. You know, everything fits as a glove, and I'm happy because I can see sit in the BMW driver and training style. You put the hand, you see the elbow is here, mm -hmm. so I can grab any part of the wheel without moving my shoulders on the seat. And the, my shoulders are in the seat. My lower part, bottom, is in the seat, but really, really firmly, but also at the same time comfortably. Uh, I don't feel, uh, you know, unnecessary pain like in the racing seat. This is like, you know, putting a glove, uh, glove around me. This is really, really, really good. Awesome. Well, I mean, I think... I, I don't know how will I, I come back to any normal seat after <laughs> this, so sorry. <laughs> well, this is the perfect seat for you. I think the biggest deal in this car is the M menu, right? So um, we can check it out under here, under car, you can see M. Okay. And I think this is where the fun stuff is. And one of the most important things is the buttons M1 and M2. I see them on the steering wheel and... Uh... Why do we have two? Well, what? I actually configured M1 to be uh, driving with the kids button. Okay, when they press it. Yeah, everything is very relaxed. Actually, the exhaust sound goes away a little bit. You see, yeah, it's I off see. now. It's off. Everything is super comfort. You can see it over there on the dash. Yeah. Everything is Engine, on comfort. Engine, uh, suspension, steering, and brakes are all on comfort, okay. And then what I always say, and if I'm still with the kids, and an Audi is passing me on the Autobahn. Or Mercedes or Mercedes, okay. or Porsche, or many other things, <laughs> then you can press M2, okay. and the car should go, you need confirm. to confirm, because it's uh, <laughs> already ah, hear the difference, and everything there. is maximum. It's yeah. Sport Plus, Sport Plus, Sport and Sport, this is... <laughs> it's already wanting you to drift, look. Okay, <laughs> we, we come back to that one at the very end, oh no. Exactly. Okay, That's release right. the whole power, chassis is Comfort, Sport and Sport Plus, is of course comfort to sport but i see the additional option brake can be comfort to sport this is novelty does, does it does it build up the brake pressure faster if it's in sport than in comfort well let's say this if way, i approach the curve so will it help me to it's, to it's not yet that smart but it definitely adapts to how the brake condition is the warmth, ah, okay. the, grade, the temperature okay. stuff like that but let's try something else uh we stop here mm -hmm. uh, this car has a launch control well yeah i have not used it so far and for me this is completely new and maybe we do this with two traction control we'll explain this in a, in a few moments so how do i activate launch control well you put the left it should be in manual mode which it okay. is right um the m now it's manual yeah okay it should be on m3 which it yes. is yes dsc off. off now left foot on the brake which okay is hard all the way the down hard you can. okay and right foot on the gas till the kick down so okay. as hard as you can Okay, now with the Preparing cruise control, launch core there you go. With the cruise control button, you can set the speed you want to start. Yeah, okay. And ready? And... Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> 150, it's already. Ah. Okay, this is 200. I think we can make it right now. Now, zero to 100, 3.9 seconds. Correct. For the competition model, absolutely. And the standard one? Uh, 4.2. Oh, I love the sound. That's great. Ah, ha, ha. But there are rare cars where you can really feel that you are comfortable and they can, you can demand from the car and the car will respond. This is the one. Great. It might not be the fastest on the track, but there might be a faster car than this. But this is the most fun. This is, you can, can really feel it. And you can still take your kids in the back. Yeah, of course. <laughs> we have two kids in the back. <laughs> Hi, kids. <laughs> but you mentioned the drift analyzer. Uh, we didn't uh, turn it on, unfortunately. Uh, but well, can we do it now? Maybe it analyzed anyway, you know? Well, I know it didn't yet. Nah, no, it didn't. we need to activate it. Yeah, we need to activate it. Maybe so what, what does it do? Let's explain this. What, the, what does the drift analyzer do? Well, I know you're a good driver and definitely a good drifter, but it will give you one to five stars. I get one for sure. Well, let's see. <laughs> but uh, it measures the angle. This I see the angle here. It measures how many meters I really drifted. This is maybe minutes or seconds of drifting, of course. Exactly. And, and, then, and then the best one.
Okay, now we talk about the result. And we have a QA at the end, and that's pretty much it. Should I take my animal? Yeah, you can take it now. Good stuff. Okay, now you can see results. Four stars um, and 116 meters. Not bad, if I practice a bit more, I can yeah, get five. Absolutely. Yeah, but I, I need this car for a few days, leave it to me. Come on, <laughs> okay. come on, okay. Now, we go out. Nadam se da ste zadovoljni onim što smo vam pokazali, da ste videli kako izgleda M3 kad driftuje. M4 je takav ili bolji. Evo, kolega nam je ostavio auto. Okay, uh, you, you feeling sick? <laughs> I'm not used to be the one naked in the driver's seat. It's <laughs> pretty cool, man. Yeah, I'm good. I love the car. I can say, uh, um, maybe uh, just make a few uh, last comments. So it's good. It fits like a glove. I can demand anything and get anything. And uh, I was very comfortable drifting by changing the angle because I set up the traction control to three because this is really wet here where we're standing right now. And it's really, really, really easy to do this. It felt too easy for me, you know, like I've been with this car for all my life. And it was nice to see while we were drifting, it was on three, you said it's a bit too much, you change it to two and then you said, yeah, it's perfect. So you really, while driving, you did a good job. Um, I would have to pay a lot for the tires because they will tear up a lot of tires if you leave with the car anyway. But uh, I suppose it would be nice time to answer some of the additional questions. Uh, I noticed that the lights on this car are no standard one. This is a BMW laser lights. Mm -hmm. This is also an option. Yeah, laser lights uh, have came first in the 7 series, so our, you know, flagship. Um, it's laser, what can I say, it's laser. They actually uh, illuminate the red up to almost a kilometer ahead if needed, and of course completely adaptive with automatic function for identifying traffic and so on and so forth. And you can see them by the wonderful blue line that they have, so this is a really cool option. But this car can practically have all of the pieces of equipment that you can expect from uh, 5 series or maybe some of the 7. I've seen the head-up displays there, we could not really film it because somebody would have to sit in my place. Everything is there. Absolutely. All of the assistance systems are there. Absolutely, absolutely. All the way to the best of the leather we have uh, and so on and so forth. Um, you know, okay, these are the carbon seats, but you can also get the uh, seats with the cooling inside of them and so on and so forth. So, yeah. Can we fit cooling in the carbon seats? I think there will be a weight problem. We don't want that, right? Too much weight is not good. <laughs> okay, let's see if there are any questions. Okay, now we answer some of them. Tell me. M3 M4. Okay, this is this is a personal question for me. M3 or M4? Uh, and I will answer this in, in Serbian. Uh, so, but maybe okay in English. You all understand anyway. Uh, my car will be will be an M4. That's for sure. But if you ask me to have one and only car, it cannot be M4. This is the M3. One and only for everything. Track, family, travel, whatever. This can be very, very tame. This car can be really slow going uh, family vehicle. But you'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know about something at the very end of this video why I say my car will be M4. But you, you'll know, learn this in a few moments. Next question. <laughs> Okay, one more time. Uh, some people have uh, uh, seen the video a bit late. Differences between M3 and M4. Well, the major thing is, of course, a, a two-door, or actually three-door, and a four-door uh, limousine coupe. Um, however, as we've mentioned before, the M4 got some serious sport upgrades. Lower center of gravity, a lower car, five centimeter lower, and much, much stiffer chassis, although the stiff chassis is available in the other car. M3 is also a family car. It's supposed and to be geom geometry of uh, suspension also changed. Well, the geometry, as in every generation, yes, it's gotten you know stiffer and better. Um, there's nothing specific I can say about this. Actually, they share the same systems at the end of the day, but you you notice the difference. You notice the difference because it's a coupe. It's stiffer just because it has less doors, less less opening parts, and so on. Okay. Next question. We have a few more minutes to the end. E46 M3. CSL. Okay, E46 M3 CSL. Okay. M3 competition. Or new M3 competition. I, I already know your answer, but you can tell me. <laughs> uh, let's say it this way. In the world of BMW, okay, there is levels of performance. So there is M performance, which is like the 340, for example. There is M3, 
there is M3 competition right here and CSL is the absolute hardcore racetrack only lightest only only carbon guess the rest I cannot speak about future cars <laughs> okay da li će sve generacije BMW-a imati u buduće prednju masku kao na testu što imaju M3 i MJ? I will ask you this, but I'm not sure we can get the answer. Will all of the future BMW models we have similar grill to this? I honestly don't, I'm not sure I can answer that either, but it looks like, it looks like more and more getting it. But guys, come on, it's a design generation. This means next designer or next model or next generation, the next thing is coming up. And remember, the we future, remember Chris Bangle also. We remember Chris Bangle. Yeah. And you know what? These are collector's pieces, yeah. actually, now, uh, in retrospect. At the end of the day, the future is also very electric. And with electric, you don't really need a grill anymore. And if you look at the uh, iX, for example, concept or the i4 coming up soon, they use it for completely different purposes, radar sensors and so on and so forth. So it will be very interesting to see. Okay, one more. Pitanje za obojcu, ali na različite načine, kako je biti trener u BMW-u? Ok, question for both of us. You will answer this first and then I will say my important part. How does it feel to be trainer within the BMW? Well, I think I, I, I always wanted to work for BMW specifically. I come from Munich. I live in Munich. So this is a dream come true for me, obviously. I think we're very spoiled. We get to try use all these right, beautiful the pieces uh, of machines and we get used to it and it's not anything but normal so i'm a very very proud man uh, to do what i do and you'll get my answer at the very end of the video uh two more questions nothing and this is it uh, they asked us will we go to our summer uh, tourist patrols with these cars no we'll not go to them because i would like it to but they will not give us the opportunity to fit all of the equipment inside anyway uh at the very end of this video uh, you told me there is uh, one special story about m3 and you, you have hidden an item from me you didn't uh, want me to see this what is it and you can can, can you reveal it now for me well when i'm asked what is the m3 for me i say it's a watch out what? Eierlegende Wollmilchsau is a legendary German animal, which does not really exist, which is an egg-laying, wool-giving, egg-making pig, which is also good for the meat. I have one with me. Uh, you say it, it's a legend. How do you have it with me? With you? Ah, okay. <laughs> I keep it exactly for the M3. So it's a pig, which has great meat, gives you great wool, because it has this lamb uh, wool at the back, it has milk, <laughs> sorry for this guys, here, uh, and it even lays some eggs. And this is the M3 guys. It could be a family car, it could be a racetrack car, it could just be just have fun car on the weekend car. It's an Eierlegende Wollmilchsau. Yeah, I can fully agree with this one, uh, even after this one hour of driving. But now at the very end, uh, I'll continue this with English uh, so you can understand what they want to say at the end of it. Uh, what you've seen now uh, is a small intro. This is a very special moment also for me, having Guy here with me and talking with an utmost expert for these cars. But there is one additional thing I want to announce. You've seen here BMW driving experience. And um, I've been all day, I mean, throughout this uh, live video in this wardrobe, because as you have maybe seen on the, on the uh, social uh, networks, I have been certified as a first Serbian BMW driving experience trainer. This means that from half of March, let's say 15th of March, these cars will be available for you to come down to the Navak Center to train one-on-one -on -one personal training with me and I can teach you all of the tricks, maybe some drifting, who knows, and you can experience full technology of BMW M cars with me here at Navak. This is a new offer that we signed a contract with the Delta Motors, an importer. BMW supporting this, of course, from Germany. And at the very end, uh, this will be the first ever similar thing in the region. So, you know, this is the first uh, live test of M3 and M4, much wider than this region. And the opportunity to be trained on these cars, first ever in the region, because there are no other BMW experience uh, centers and there are no cars that you that can use in this way. So stay tuned, stay with us, Navak Center, you train with me and from 15 to March we'll, we'll tell more. Have you have, do you have to say anything for the very end? Super excited to be here. My first time uh, in Serbia, so thank you for having me. You have 
one of our great instructors right here next to Belgrade. So thank you for having me. Thank you for giving me the tour of the cars and first time, I told you. So Now when we turn off the cameras, he will go a bit too, for a bit of drifting. Okay, so we have to say goodbye. Prijatno, doviđenja, hvala vam. I nadamo se da ćete biti i dalje uz naše kamo mi, okay? da ćete i dalje biti uz naše mreže, da ćete i dalje vidjeti ono što vam pripremo i da ćete ako ste zakasnili na ovaj naš uživo prenos vratiti nas za snimak i pogledati šta smo to pokazali. Za neke smetnje, krivi internet, šta da radimo, negdje se malo prekidao snimak, ali sve informacije su tu i ono što mogu samo na kraju da vam najavim, automobili su tu. Naravno, prodaju su, ali što je važnije, tu su za naš test, tako da vrlo brzo ćete vidjeti mnogo toga o njima i vozit ćemo ih kako valja i po danu, ne samo po noći. Hvala vam puno, vidimo se uskoro, ćao!